Assalamualaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on ASP.NET 4.5 for students at King Faisal University and for all those who want to learn ASP.NET. This is part 5 in this series entitled Cascading Style Sheet in ASP.NET 4.5. Cascading Style Sheet or CSS is a language used to format information on the web. It can be embedded in a page or written in a separate file. It consists of rules that can be referenced by a selector. There are several kinds of selectors including the universal selector which affects all the elements and is denoted by asterisk or star. The type selector which can be an HTML element or tag like H, P, or div. The ID selector which starts with a sharp or pound sign followed by a name given by the designer. And the class selector which starts with a dot and also followed by a name given by the designer. Inside the brackets following the name of the selector are properties which can be sensed by snippets as we type them. We will create an ASP.NET website and place it in C colon backslash ASP backslash activity2. Then we will create an ASP.NET web form named default that contains an embedded CSS with the following details. For P selector, the color is red and text alignment is left. For div selector, the color is blue and text alignment is right. For ID named sharp big, the font size is 25 pixels. For class name dot feeds, opacity is 0.4. Afterwards, we will use these four selectors inside the body of the page. Let's create our website file, new website, empty website, C sharp, and in our folder, it's activity2. We click OK. Then we create our new web form, add add new item the name is default correct click add so where are we going to place our CSS it should be right after the title inside the head now notice how I type style and as I put the greater than symbol the ending tag is already supplied by the snippet so let's start with our rules the first is P open brace close brace and inside it the property that we will change are one is color the value should be red and the other is text align top and it should be left class that is already our rule for p now for div the same brace close brace and inside the braces, we will change the color to blue there. And the text align is right. Colors for div. Now we go to our ID named big open close brace. Inside it, we will change the font size there, top and we'll make it 25 pixels don't forget the semicolon and the last one is a class named dot page close and we'll only change here the opacity which is equal to 0 0.4 that's it we have done our style now how are we going to put it inside our body or our main content so inside uh, the div for the form we can start with them this uses div resulting to what it should result to color blue and right alignment Correct, because we are using div. Uh, if we use p, then uh, this uses p uh, resulting to red color and left alignment. And if we're going to use div, for example, and the combination of the class called uh, fades there it is fades then this uses div 
and opacity resulting to what? A blue color, a right alignment, and 0 0.4 opacity. There it is. That's the combination of the div and the class page. And let's have another, the last one, using the ID. Let's use it for P. There is ID is equal to, uh, we have big, right? Big. ID big. This uses uh, P and big ID resulting to red color because of P left alignment because of P and font size of what 25 pixels okay that's it so our style is above the head and we try to utilize it in our form. Let's look at it in our design. Mm, looks nice. Let's try to run it. Control F5. Okay, good. In the previous activity, we created a CSS that is embedded inside the page. This time, we will use one in a separate file. We will create an ASP.NET website and place it in CASP Activity 3. We will create a new folder called Styles. And inside that folder, we will create a CSS file called styles.css. This will design the default.aspx later. We have to follow the numbers in each box. For number one, we will set the font family to Arial for all the selectors. So this means that we're going to use the universal selector, star or asterisk. For number two, we're going to use an ID selector, sharp page, where the width is going to be 900 pixels. Let's create our website for activity three. File new website. Activity 3. Say no for now. We'll create a folder. New folder. And we're going to call it styles. Inside this folder, we'll create a style sheet. So add style sheet. And we're going to call it styles also. Notice that the style sheet toolbar is already enabled on top. And one of the icons there is the build style, which is very important for us. Let's start with the overall selector, the star, or the universal selector, I mean, a star. Let's use the build style for this now. Make sure that you are in between the braces, you are inside the braces. Click build style. We'll change the font family to Arial. Click OK. See, it was typed for us. Uh, second one is the page. Open and close. Let's use again the build style to change the width, which is in the position. So that is 900, but I think it's taking as much time. So I'd prefer typing them instead. Again, uh, typing or using the build style doesn't matter. Either will you, either way, you'll achieve the same result. Background color. For now, we'll use light blue, correct. Text align is a center correct and font size for the header is 30 px make sure that you type the letters p and x without them it will be an error 900 px and the height is 100 px okay then the menu ID selector inside it will change the width to 900 px. The text alignment is to the right, and the background color is Alice blue. Okay, done for the menu. Now for the each one HTML element. We'll change only one and that is the font size. The font size, sorry, we'll make it uh, 20 px. Next to each one is the 
ID content. By the way, you have to make sure that your spelling is correct. With is 700 px and it's floating to the left correct next to the content is the sidebar okay the background color is also light blue and the width is uh, 200 px okay some mathematics the width of the sidebar is 200 and the content is 700 the width of our page is 900 so that means the content will be on the left and the sidebar on the right and it should be floating to the left okay last is the footer footer the background color is also light blue. The width is 900 px and it should clear both so that it goes down. Okay. Okay, now we can save our style sheet. Let's create our default web form and Add new item, default, click add. Let's go to the design view and drag the styles sheet to the body. Now let's go back to the source. You can see that it's inserted after the title inside the head. Good. Now we can use this IDs. Let's start with the page. Inside this div, we'll create another div and here the id will be the header let's type header here let's create another div and for this div the id is the menu and let's type menu here and another div This time it's for the content. Go to content. Make sure again that the spelling is correct. And for the content, we'll have some other items that, like the H1 or the header one. Uh, we'll put here header one here. After header one, we'll have some paragraphs start with this is where the content is placed I'll just copy this because we're going to show it several times in the body so for this P I think it's around 8 times so I'll copy 1 Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then another P. Only one. Okay, and then outside the content of the div, I should correct. Okay, no, I think this div should be here. Correct. Okay. Then we have the sidebar. Dip. Uh, ID is equal to sidebar. Okay. Sidebar goes here. And this is the last dip for our footer. So the ID is equal to footer and footer goes here. Okay, I think we're done. Let's go to the design. It looks great. Let's press Control F5. Okay, well, congratulations. We've just implemented a CSS using a separate file. Thank you for watching this video. Masalama.